bless you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, program. My name is Dave. I'm the host, and I couldn't be happier to have you here with us tonight. You know, I don't mean this to be an endorsement, and I'm not saying this is how I'm going to vote, but it occurred to me the other day, the one good thing Ross Perot does, I think, I believe he has to make almost every other American alive feel better about their haircut. I just, I think, that's in the way... There is a uh, fascinating poll. The New York Times and CBS News took this poll, and it has to do with the believability of the candidates. Like 60% of the people in the poll say they believe George Bush is probably not telling the entire story about his involvement in Iran-Contra, that scandal. And an another 30% believe that Bill Clinton is not telling all there is to tell about his evasion or avoidance of the draft. 90% of the people in this poll do not believe that that's actually Ross Perot's real voice. <laughs> oh, man. That's a long way to drive the... ...find out the diner is closed, ain't it? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Dan Quayle is uh, very busy getting ready for his vice presidential debate against Al Gore. He's taking a couple of days off. Today, I believe he was going to work on his nervous giggling. <laughs> and tomorrow, he'll be working on the glassy-eyed stare. So he wants to get those two things down. And just stay down a little bit. Sinead O'Connor, did you hear this? Was arrested in Rome today in Vatican City. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely true. They caught her trying to pick up the Pope's vacation pictures. Wow. What? What? Oh. <laughs> she, hey, and you want to know where they caught her? At the Vatican photo mat. <laughs> I, left, I left that part out of the joke. We uh, have a wonderful program this evening, ladies and gentlemen, from aforementioned uh, Saturday Night Live, or alluded to at any rate, Phil Hartman is with us tonight. <laughs> And as always, whenever we have a popular male guest on the show, I like to take a little bow. Thank you. As though I had something to do with it. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, also, the host of Saturday Night Live this week, very popular, very talented uh, motion picture actor and, and star, big-time star Joe Pesci is here. Are you bowing a little bit? I like to, uh... I'm working in honor of Joe Pesci. I'm kind of working up a little tough guy character here. Where, where you see trouble, you see the trouble, you spot it like this. That's how you, that's how you detect the trouble, and here's how you put an end to it. You... That's the way a real tough guy operates. Here's how it goes. You're, you say you're in a bar someplace enjoying a drink, and all of a sudden you... That's right. You've seen the See trouble. It, yeah. You've spotted the trouble, and now you want to put an end to the trouble. Yeah. So it's just... See it? Put an end to it. <laughs> There's no trouble there. And not much entertainment. And uh, a very funny uh, young man, a Nice guy and a fine comedian, Jeff Stilson, will be out here a little bit later. Now, ladies and gentlemen, good friend, Paul Schaefer. Paul. Thank you very much. You know, I'm... I'm so looking forward to the show tonight. I think I'm, I'm so gonna, happy to have you back. I'm just Paul. going to laugh Paul and Schaefer laugh. Paul Schaefer was tonight. not here last Thank night. You. No, I, Paul Schaefer was off with his uh, family, his loved was, ones, his close ones. His, his uh, I was uh, observing the uh, uh, observing the holidays. Holiday. Paul was not here as a result, and we had Bet Sussman. Paul yeah. was not here last night. That's right, Will. <laughs> I can't can't even begin to tell you how happy I am to have you back here tonight. Thank you. It's nice to be back. I'm nice sure Bette did a fabulous job. She was. She was great, but she's certainly wore, different than you. Wore a couple of different hats, I understand. <laughs> yeah. I have a little story here. You remember a couple months ago I was telling you how 
It's fascinating if you listen to people talk in, uh, like on radio or on television or at work or at school or in the home, and occasionally you hear things that are so unusual and so odd by virtue of word juxtaposition uh -huh. that they really get your attention. And the example that I cited, one night I was at home with my uh, device there watching the uh, television. I, I call it the boob tube. <laughs> <laughs> and I was clicking around there, and uh, up comes the uh, Home Shopping Network. Sure. Oh, I'm really on the edge, aren't I? <laughs> and uh, I hear a guy say, he's got this little porcelain thing, and, and he says, now let's measure our swan candle holder. And I said to myself, well, in the history of civilization, in the history of recorded verbal language, you've never heard anyone say, let's measure our swan candle holder. <laughs> So I thought that was odd for the first time because the combination of words in any language would have to be infinite. So for the very first time, somebody has said, let's measure our swan candle holder. All right, so now I heard another one of these. I'm driving home Friday night and I'm listening to WFAN here in New York City. Big, powerful, 24-hour-a-day sports talk radio. All sports. All, all sports. Uh, they do the, the Mets games. They do the Knicks games. They do the, the, the Rangers and on and on. And it's sports talk all day, all night, nothing but sports. And they got a guy, very good uh, host. He does like the pregame and the postgame, and his name's Howie Rose, and he's on a lot at night. So now he's calling, or people are calling in Howie, and the first call comes in and says, hey, Howie, what's the matter? It sounds like you got a cold. Howie pauses for a second, and he says, allergies, dude. I said to myself, again, I'll bet you Probably. never in the history of recorded time First has time. anyone uttered the sentence, allergies, allergies dude. dude. <laughs> well, thank Man. you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for indulging. Oh, stop it! Thank you. That. You know what I've started? I've started collecting uh, political memorabilia. And I think some of this stuff is, it may not all be valuable, but I think some of it at least is fascinating, and I couldn't be happier to have it. Paul Music here, I want to show folks my collection of political memorabilia. Wow. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yes, sir. Here you go. Let me show you this first item. You know what? It's like campaign buttons and bumper stickers and T-shirts. Take a look at this. Here's a, it's a very odd item, and I can't, I can't recall, I can't recall ever, ever having actually seen anybody wearing one of these. It's the, uh, another hippie for Nixon headband, there. <laughs> one day this is going to be quite valuable. This is all back. part of Dave's political memorabilia. Let's go back. Uh, in 1864, Abraham Lincoln always ended his rallies by tossing these to the crowd. They're the Abraham Lincoln fake warts. There. <laughs> That made the audience sad. Yeah. Uh, here's a t-shirt. Here's one. It's a rare piece of memorabilia from uh, 1984. I'm the guy who voted... I'm the guy who voted for Mondale. Yeah. Right there. Uh, here's a program from a Michael Dukakis uh, fundraising dinner from his 1988 bid for the presidency. Uh, let's take a look at the schedule there. 6 p.m. dinner. 7 p.m. Uh, remarks by Michael Dukakis, and 8 p.m. audience wake up. <laughs> May come in handy here tonight. <laughs> Here's a popular button from the 1948 campaign. I don't care if he's dead, a fifth term for FDR. <laughs> It wasn't crossing the Delaware that won Washington the hearts of voters. It was this campaign item right here, ladies and gentlemen, the chattering wooden teeth. There, look at that. Uh, this one's uh, sure to be worth some money down the road, the Bill Clinton Souvenir Hotel Key Room. Hotel Room Key. Uh, this delighted voters in the last election, but no more. It's Bush in 88, read my lips, lip balm.
1988, read my lips, lip balm. What is it, honey? On the floor, thank you very much. A note from the sidelines, a valuable comedy tip coming in from the sidelines. America's fattest president, William Howard Taft, chose this appropriate vehicle for getting his message out to the voters. It's the giant ham. Thank you, honey, for that valuable comedy tip. Did you see Dave last night? He brings a girl up off the street and then chains her to a giant ham. Dave? No, oh, I'm sorry, Paul. Okay. Let's see, what do we do now? Oh, yeah, this is another good one right here. Okay. Uh, Abraham Lincoln got his hard-working image across to voters with this novelty campaign item right here. Honest Abe, the rail splitter, cheese and cracker hostess set. <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> this is the president who makes us so sad because he was afflicted with facial warts. <laughs> We're so, we're so sad. <laughs> and finally, here's a 1932 promotional giveaway that backfired. It's the Hoover Sucks Vacuum. 